Next thing I need to make on the titch for the boiler is the front steam header. Let me show you the drawings are on page 183. There's a description in the book here, but it's not nearly, to me, not nearly as helpful as the actual piece, the photograph. If you read the description, it's hard to even tell that it's a two-piece item. But essentially, a two-piece bronze item, three-quarter inch diameter, threaded on this end so that it can be threaded into the front bung on the boiler, which I haven't yet tapped on mine. And then a 532nd inch hole here for the steam line to be soldered in for to go to the snifter and a 316th inch hole on the bottom for the steam line that goes into the superheater and then out to the cylinders. So pretty straightforward. Um, the one thing you might, I, I sketched it out and honestly I had a few ideas because I really prefer not to solder pipes directly to the header but the thing is, there's just not a lot of room. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the actual boiler, and there's the front bung that, that we're talking about that's not yet tapped and threaded. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's the smoke box itself, and you can see this is the hole for the chimney tube. That's only about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the boiler, which right that sits right here, to the inside for the, the chimney for the petticoat so not a heck of a lot of room to put in extra fittings and so forth which is what I had in mind I was thinking well gosh why not have the header and then have some kind of a screw on fitting but the petticoat would be right in the way it's just not a lot of space there so long story short I'm going to make it according to the plans at least at first and hope we can adjust and let's see let me just walk over here I'll show you I've got the big one inch bronze bar chucked up in my three jaw and this is oversized so what I need to do is turn this down I'll face it off and turn down a portion of it to three I think what I'll do is go to one inch at first do like a three inch length and then do a maybe an inch and a half of it at three quarter inches which would be more than enough material for this part and then I'll have some left over that's already down to size so I can use the 5C collet chuck. So that's the project for the next thing is just getting the uh, steam header pieces done. Here's the bronze. I've turned this portion, it's about two and a half inches overall here. That's all the stick out was. Turned this part down to one inch so it'll be usable for other stuff. Turned this part down to exactly three quarters of an inch and this is the material that I'll make the steam header out of. That machine it just machines beautifully and just using very sharp high speed steel tools. Okay there's a good start on the steam header. You can see this is the part that well, has the 316th inch hole in the center and then the 532nd inch hole on the end. And in this piece I'll be boring a 316th inch hole up through the bottom into this passageway and I'll also the tricky part is I need to drill and tap three holes number 256 holes an eighth inch in from the end in this in this piece and go into that piece and I need the orientation such that the top hole um, is is clear and it provides an indication where the bottom boring will be on the on this piece for that that steam pipe that needs to come out the bottom so what I decided to do was I created a little stub here as you can see I don't know if I can undo it one-handed but you know, I took this stub that my friend Russ gave me drilled in here and I tapped it 5 16 inch 40 for this space and so I, I've tightened this on here and I'm going to crazy glue these two pieces together and then I can use it in a 5C collet chuck in the mill and use the pitch circle diameter function to drill and tap the three holes for 256 and then it'll be pretty clear while I'm at it the bottom hole in the in this piece um, you know in the center I'll, I'll take my time and align everything but I think you can get the idea the key is that I needed to make this, the stub, so that this part would tighten up flush against it and I would know where the, I, I could mark where the top is so that when it's tightened into the front of the boiler 
it's oriented oriented correctly, clocked, if you will. Okay, I've got the stub inside the 5C collet block, and this is the part that will get screwed into the front of the of the boiler here. It's five sixteenths forty threads there, and then inside it's threaded three sixteenths forty. So that part screws in here, and then I'll crazy glue the top part down to it. I'm going to use the drill for alignment, and these are the 256 stainless steel screws that I plan on using to secure it. And after I drill and tap all those, then the idea is to drill from the bottom there, and um, if the screws are lined up along where these uh, marks are on the collet, then drill through the bottom of that piece for the steam supply line. Okay, I've got the assembly in the mill, and one thing I always do, I thought I'd explain this crazy setup here. If you haven't seen my videos before, I don't use the pitch circle diameter thing very often, maybe once a year. So whenever I do that on the mill, I always do a test run and put a Sharpie marker in the drill chuck and make sure that the three holes or however many holes that I need to drill and tap come out like I expect. So I've carefully centered the block in, in its place entered the com computation on the um, on the DRO and have my three holes and they look reasonable so now that I'm satisfied that they're good I'll start drilling and tapping there I'm not gonna bore you with the whole process but basically the the thickness of the two pieces of bronze is nine sixteenths of an inch so I can drill a half inch deep and tap a half inch deep for my stainless steel screws that will hold it together and then when all is said and done then I can lay it on its side and support this edge here while I drill a 332nd inch hole or excuse me 316th inch hole through the bottom in between the two screws here and um, that'll be the the setup for the the steam outlet and I'll show you that I'll bring you back and show you that that process when I get ready to do that all right, that part went pretty well, except for as I was drilling these holes here, and I, I drilled the tapping size hole, the number 50, and I also drilled a clearance hole in the top portion of, uh, of the piece. So as I was drilling them, it came loose a little bit because I, I hadn't used a wrench or anything when I screwed it into the stub. So since it came loose, I took the advantage of loosening the back bolt here and then choking it down, so to speak, so it's much better supported um, the collet is now holding the bronze part. I'll still, when I put it in the vise, to um, to drill the 330, the, excuse me, the th the 316 inch hole in the in the bottom. I'll still support this end because you don't want any deflection. However, and I'll I'll, I'll step drill it probably as well. I just thought I'd point this part out. So so far so good. Now it's just back in the vise. Chalk this, block this part up to support it and then drill a 3 16 inch hole um, and it's 3 16 inch back from the edge which will put it in the center of this portion here so you, you got a, a 1 16 inch solid portion here and then in the center um, well, you, you can do the math in the from the drawing but that'll that'll center the hole in the uh, in the opening there here is set up for drilling that bottom hole that I was talking about. The little scribed line you can see is 3 16ths of an inch back from the front there and um, it's right on center. I use my wiggler to indicate right on that line. So now all i got to do is drill the 3 16ths inch hole. Okay, that went pretty well. As you can see, here's a little succession of drill bits I used. A 16th, 3 32nd, 8th inch and then a stubby 3 16 inch drill there to finish it out so it's all the way to the center and now we can take it out clean it up and we'll be all set okay here's the completed front steam header pretty happy with how it came out and now what's funny is now that I've made this thing and one thing I would strongly recommend is marking a scribe line I use a little triangular file to scribe a line there on top so that if I have to take it apart, it'll be easy to reline up again. Now that I've made it, I realize what LBSC was trying to say in the book. If I understand him correctly, he's saying go ahead and make the two parts, um, tap the opening here, 
thread this thing in there till it's flush and solid then take the this the front part with the three holes in it stick it up against the the um the first part where it's supposed to go and then with the tube in it and all that and mark mark your first hole drill and tap then repeat so that 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 handles the clocking which is a good solution i think i came up with a good solution too i do need to drill and tap here so that's what i'm trying to do right now if you can see i've got it on my granite surface plate and i'm marking out the center line and this is interesting too because that top line which is clearly not on the center of the bung that's from 5 8 inch down from the top of this the second one which is closer to the center is 5 8 inch down from the underneath or from the top of the the uh, the sheet if you will and while, I'm, while I have it all set up like this I'm also marking out the back pieces too and same kind of deal basically what I've done here the, the since I'm, I know for sure I'm going to use a different um, design on the throttle which happily there's this large bung back here or bushing soldered into the the frame of the boiler so I'll be using the center of it and I just measured the height and then I put my height gauge on top did half and then marked scribe the half and same thing for this one here instead of going from some arbitrary mark on top of the boiler I figured halfway through the bushing is fine so because there could be a little bit of offset from side to side, you know, from the front to the back, but the important thing, I think, will be to be in the center there. So that's the centers marked, and the next thing to do is to drill out the, drill and tap the front part over here to accept this uh, steam header that we just made. Steam header is made, the front steam header. I do need to drill and tap the bung here to, for 5 16 inch 40 to fit it. So. I've used my wiggler. I marked it out, used a little center center drill, and I used my wiggler to carefully line it up. I also have it in the vise, was uh, supported by wood, um, and uh, gonna be, be very gentle. Do step drilling and um, take it really easy drilling this hole because I don't want to mess up the boiler. So I'll bring you back when that's done. All right, done. working on the titch on New Year's Eve. A little cool out here. I've got the space heater on in case you hear that rattling noise in the background or the neighbors shooting off fireworks. But there's the steam header. I'm really satisfied with the, the fit and the clocking. As you can see, it came out just perfect. So that, that part was good. Um, Co uh, Cozo. LBSC's method is probably good as well. Um, next step is, of course, to make the superheater. And you can see I've got the 3 16 inch lines. I've bent them up a little bit, just fiddling around, test fitting. And I need to make a nut of 5 16 inch 40 threaded nut to go on the this the lower steam pipe that will connect to the uh, um, steam inlet for the cylinders. So I thought I had made one of those, but I haven't. So. Let's do that real quick, and we'll make the little copper bushing for it as well. I'll bring you back and show you that. And 7 16 inch hex brass, and I've got it already in the lathe. I also drew a little sketch. It's pretty simple. I, I consulted the some of the resources that I've shown earlier. Um, from You can find them on the IBLS website. And the only difference is that it's a 3 16 inch line, so this space will be a little bit smaller. Um, but it's a simple thing, you're just drilling and tapping and um, rounding off the edges. I'll also need to make a special cone for it out of um, copper, and I'll show you that as well. As you can see, I've drawn the, the picture, pretty simple, and um, we'll, uh, we'll show you a little bit about making those. I faced off the piece to make sure it was nice and flat on this end rounded the edges with just with a file just to kind of break those edges center drilled it now i've got a number 11 drill in here i'm going to drill it deep enough so that it'll be enough to go through and then enough for the cutoff tool and that's about all number 11 gives a nice just a few thou clearance on the 3 16 inch tube so it should be perfect now i've gone in a quarter inch with a letter l drill just a quarter inch deep i, I use the 
indicator on the lathe for this. Now my friend Russ gave me a uh, digital setup to uh, put a micrometer on the tail stock. I guess I need to do that maybe after I finish the titch, but thank you Russ, I appreciate that. Um, anyways, so so far so good, and then what, now we can just start tapping. The taps, I keep my um, some of these sets in little Altoids tins that are clearly marked, and since we're going with just a short distance of this tap set actually, let me show you the set, it's hard to do this stuff one hand, but it's a three, three set um, with a, that's the, the bottoming tap, this is the beginning, the starting tap, we can see the long taper there, it wouldn't really create much, with only a quarter inch to go, it wouldn't be useful very much. So what I'm starting is with the intermediate tap, and then we'll move to the bottoming tap. And what I use is these little, you can get these tapping tap holders. There's the whole set of them that I keep in my um, one of the drawers in my tool chest. And I made a receptacle to put this in. You'll see it when I mount it in the lathe. And so here's the receptacle. It's a homemade thing out of a chunk of aluminum. It's got some set screws in the bottom there that keep it from rotating. You can see they hit against the base there. So this thing, you tighten up the, the, the little screw, tighten up a little screw to hold the tap in, and then you can just set that in inside the holder. And it uses the same shaft as my tailstock die holder. I got that from Little Machine Shop, the tailstock die holder. And like I said, I just made this uh, this part myself. Here's the tailstock die holder. I actually have two of these. They're so handy. wish I had a half a dozen. Then I wouldn't have to keep changing them out. But now we'll just put some uh, tapping uh, fluid on the edge of the tap. And I do the tapping part by hand with only a quarter inch and it's such a fine thread. The last thing you want to do is mess it up with the machine work. So I'll do that by hand and I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when that's okay. Seconds later got a nice set of threads beginning there with the intermediate tap. You can see the um, tap paste is stuck on there and the threads are tapped. So we'll just put the bottoming tap on to, to run the threads all the way down to the bottom of the, of the hole there. And here we are cutting it off at 5 16 inch. I, I did file the edges just a little bit to uh, soften the edges on this side too. So we'll finish cutting it off and show you the finished product. There's a finished nut, came out pretty nice. I just test fit it on the locomotive, it fits the steam inlet pipe good. So now I've got a piece of 3 8 inch copper rod chucked up in the lathe. I'm getting ready to face this off and then turn the outer diameter down to 281 thousandths. And then we can um, make the cone and drill the center of it. Make a cone that can get soldered on to the end of the steam. Turn down about a 3 8 inch long section so I can make a couple of cones and it's right it's supposed to be 281 so just a half thou under that pretty happy with that that'll work so right now we'll, we'll uh, readjust the cross slide so I can cut a 30 degree angle here and we'll leave a little flat and we'll do a cutoff obviously and then we'll, we'll, before we do the cut it off we'll drill a hole through the center but it's good, especially with a really soft material like copper, to do the outside stuff right. first. I want to correct something I said a minute ago. You actually do need to drill the hole first, um, be, so you can tell how how deep you need to make the cone. And so this is a, and you can see a little. I put a little blue mark on there too. Let me run the lathe real. You can see the edge there. So a little blue sharpie marker. So so there's a little bit. You don't want to turn it all the way down, so there's a knife edge. So there's just a teeny little bit, a few thousand. Sorry about the shaky camera. I'm leaning my arm there. There we go. Much better. Anyway, so we've got that. We've got it drilled. We've got the 30 degree cone cut. And um, now we well, cut it off just leaving a little flat behind the edge of the cone, a 32nd of an inch. And I'm gonna, obviously the reason I've turned down a bunch of this material is to make a couple of these while I'm in. That's what the completed cone looks like fresh off the lathe. Caught it with a little piece of wire. Obviously I have to clean it up, deburr it, clean up the back of it. And um, but that looks good. I think that'll be fine. I'll make a spare obviously and then we can use the best of the two. Alright, both the cones came out nice. Here's a nice view of a finished one. It's 
test fitting it on a little stub of 316 inch copper but and this is the nut we made tonight so I can show you how that fits down there and it'll get once that is the cone is silver soldered on to the end then that can get connected to the steam inlet for the engine for the cylinders here's the spare that I made you know if you're gonna make these things always a good idea to make a couple so you can see a little how much of the edge is left there and uh, came out very nice either one of these should do fine and so there's where we are right now hey folks I think I'm gonna wrap it up here it's New Year's Eve it's getting chilly out here I'm gonna get ready to go inside but just to recap I'm pretty happy with how the steam header came out and we've got the fittings and so forth ready to go the next thing really is to um, solder this or braise it according to the book he calls for brazing and I'm just not sure about that so I'll, I would love some advice maybe I'll publish another question and get your input on this from any builders out there but I'm pretty pleased with how the steam header came out and how the fittings the connections that we have uh, I think we're, we're ready to go maybe I'll do a separate video on the brazing process and the fitting of the of the pipes in the in the uh, in the front of the locomotive I think that would be a good good separate episode so happy new year everybody I appreciate you please give me a thumbs up please pass the word on help me spread the channel thanks and we'll see you soon